Alhamdulillah, it is with the immense fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables the likes of myself through his vast wisdom, vast knowledge to speak about him, the knower of all, the giver of knowledge, the inspirer of hearts to the means, the known physical means that were presented and given to humanity and the whole of creation as a gift and none other than Sayyidul Wujud, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the one who was the walking, talking guide and acted upon and lived each and every aspect of guidance every sunnah you know, every action you know, every good deed you know was completed and perfected by none other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alhamdulillah, like we've just discussed and talked about what a great honor it is to be sat here in the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and I would just like to touch upon one point that the brother has made in the beginning about having the correct intention meaning the importance of ridding yourself because this is not a light thing that a person should just take or I have heard this before or I have, I have listened to this before if that was the case then why are you here? then why are you here? if you already know a person should completely eradicate this thought and feeling that it's for somebody else or I already know I'll give you an example and I will explain to you why this is one of the beloved qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when a person rids themselves of these issues and these feelings why they will be more receptive to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a very special sifat by the name of himself, his attribute Al-Aleem the giver of knowledge the giver of knowledge now no matter how much I talk or however much books you read it doesn't necessarily mean that not knowledge will enter into your heart how many examples do you know, how many bayans have you sat in, how many lectures have you sat in but yet the knowledge does not enter into your heart and it's not just the knowledge, it's the practice of that knowledge how many times is it that you hear to pray five times, how many times, just very simple things how many times are you here to fast in the month of Ramadan? How many times are you here to love the Prophet ﷺ, to follow the Sunnah? But why is it not sticking there? Why? This is the very important question. Why does the benefit not withstand in your heart? I'll explain to you why. Our Mashaikh once kindly explained to us this feeling of deservingness. The feeling of deserving. I'm looking at some of you now, with all of you have been through nursery, okay? In nursery, you go through, uh, you go through a phase, maybe you do some colouring, you do something on a computer, and what does the teacher do? They reward you with some sticker. They will say, here you go, uh, child, here's a sticker, here's a, uh, you know, some marker, some reward. Then you'll go to a primary school and you'll do you'll do well in your in your tests you'll do well in your thingy and they reward you they reward you don't they they don't they don't just say to you there's no reward they'll give you a certificate then you go to high school they may even give you merits financial rewards stuff like this you go to college and university it's the same principle you are rewarded almost there and then so from very young you've been taught that whatever you do you will be rewarded for it you will be rewarded for it what this is doing obviously from young you can't tell the difference whether it's good or bad for you but one thing is in your heart if you do something right you feel like you deserve reward you feel like you deserve reward in some sense you go to university, you spend two, three, four years, you'll do a course on whatever your course is, you'll pass all your exams, you'll do well. What is it at the end what you're expecting? A degree. That piece of paper, that acknowledgement that you have done well in your course. That you have done well in your course. 
then you might find yourself in a very healthy job where you're getting paid you know, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 pound a month in some cases. Now let me ask you this. In your workplace, you are contracted to work maybe seven, eight, ten hours a week. And in those ten hours a week, your management or your hierarchy will say to you, I expect you to work to this level. I expect certain tasks to be done and certain things to be done. And you turn around, say nowadays a lot of people are working from home and they don't do them seven, eight hours properly. You know, a lot of people don't do this. Or even at work, they'll be slacking, they'll be doing other things. Maybe he might spend extra 20, 50, 25, 30 minutes in the toilet. He might even take extended times in his break. At the end of the month, if your manager says to you, I'm going to deduct this time that you've taken away, you're going to pull a hissy fit. Oh, he's paid me less. I've got less wage now. Because you think that you've done that, that you, you've done that, you fulfilled that right of his. Now, what if I say to you, now go to the management and say, actually, I've, out of these seven hours I'm contracted to work, and out of these tasks, actually, I've only done a handful of these tasks. Nine times, out of the ten, nine times out of ten, the manager will say to you, okay, thank you for your honesty, we're going to pay you less. Because his concern is how much, uh, how much is going out, what are the finances like, how much, he can, uh, did, how, how much he can reduce that cost, those overheads. Now imagine you say to your manager, actually manager, I'm going to only work one hour, but I expect my full wage. He's going to say, May, here's your resignation, off you go. Out of one hour, you might have a job, say, you, you might have a job of, I don't know, working in uh, home bargaining, Morrison, stuff like this, and he says to you, I want you to put stuff on the shelf, I want you to work on the till. You say, manager, no, I'm not going to work on the till. He says, but I've told you to work on the till. And he turns around and he says, and you turn around and say to him, actually, no, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do what I want to do. And if your wage is reduced to the end of the month, how, how, month, how will your reaction be? I can't imagine many people will be happy because he'll have bills to pay, he'll have responsibilities, he won't be happy. Now let's emphasize on another point. Now I've just explained to you what will happen if you don't meet the criteria that your boss, your management, your, meaning your salary, your livelihood, you've not met those criteria. Now let's flip the coin here. Let's turn it around another way. In your day, how, many, how much of your time is spent in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In one day, 24 hours, how much is your mind in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Say you pray five times a day. You might not be remembering, but we'll just count that. Five time, for five times a day, we'll probably say it's anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour. So that's one hour out of 24 hours you've spent. Say that one day you've gone to a zikr mafil, you've gone to a majlis, you spent one extra hour. So out of two hours, out of 24 hours, two hours were spent in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just opening up something. Adam, uh, Brother Adam here kindly wrote down the stats, you know, meaning the actual hard number. If you were to spend a full 60 year life living and how much of those 60 years would be spent in the worship and ibadah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obedience. So 60 years, we're going to work on average lifespan here. That's 42,000 hours. 42,000 hours of your life is spent in 60 years. Say he's, they've done a calculation of 24 to 1 in 60 years. So out of 42,000 hours of your life, you spent 700 hours in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do the, look, here's a hard number, here's a stat, 700 hours of your life has been spent in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what are we all expecting? Jannatul Firdaus. Ask yourself which part of you is deserving of it. You know you can't go to your management and say to your management, pay me for things I've not done. So now you're going to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, reward me for things I've not done. But Allah will still reward you. Why? Because He is a Rahman. And He is still merciful. And He is still kind. 
So even from that basic understanding, you can come to know that in this life, it's a test. It's a prison. It's not supposed to be a place of fun and games. Yes, there will be times where things are easier than, than usual. There will be times where you're not in, um, you're not in mushkilat. There will be times where you're not in nasibat. But then there will be times where you are. So how do you cope with that? That's where a person will come to know about this, the power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So really that's just something, one thing, one thing to contemplate on. If you're sacrificing week in and week out, spending hours and hours learning and spending time in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not time wasted. Because ultimately you will die, your life will come to an end. This time is not per permanent. That, that clock was, was begun at the time you were born and it has an end. You know, when your minute comes and your second comes to pass away, the clock will continue going. But it will be your end. And we will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beseech Allah, give us one more chance. Give us one more chance. And the Mashaikh have told us that if you were to see these people who have experienced death and come back, you would think that these people were not normal. You would almost think that they were malaika. Such, such were the people that if they were to return, you would think that they were angels and they've come from somewhere else. You wouldn't know. They'd be sat in the masjid 24-7. They won't have no desire for world, for the world and its nature. They'll say, out of 42,000 hours of my life, I want 42,000 hours with Allah's closeness and Allah's remembrance. I don't want any other time. That is these people, if they were to come back. But Allah SWT has told us that this will not, you will not be allowed to return. Once the, the seal of life is, is, has been given, and the, the marker of death is put upon you, you cannot return. It, there is no two ways about it. One other, one other thing a person may ask is, I don't have the tawfiq. Who knows what tawfiq means? Does someone put their hand up? Who knows what tawfiq means? Just give me the literal meaning. You would have heard this a lot of tawfiq minute there. You would have heard it. Many Mulvis, many Qaris, many Imams, they do this to Allah tawfiq minute there. What does it mean? Ability. 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 Sometimes you hear the Imam will say, Ya Allah tawfiq minute there. Panj wak namaz minute there. Give me, allow me to pray five times a day. I tell you what, there is not a single person in this room. Allah SWT has not already given you the ability. There's water, there's prayer mats, there's, you know, there's, there's the knowledge of how to do your wudu, there's knowledge of prayer, there's going to the masjid, there's all of these things. Where's the tawfiq? The tawfiq is already there. Now where is the, now where is the link between ikhlas and tawfiq? Because a lot of the things this brother, will, brother Shahir will mention is, a matter of sincerity, a matter of actually becoming and removing the obstacles that are known that will keep you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that these things are apparent. Now the Mashaikh have set out some basic guidelines and I want you to try to understand what I'm trying to say here. Try to stay with me to the best of your ability and your knowledge. Stay focused and we, they will, I'll talk about some subcategories and the actual categories themselves. The first thing, now I'll explain you through like a miniature journey here. Now the first thing that will happen at Ruha, the inspiration will come. So meaning this is an element of Tawfiq that will come into your heart. At Ruha, the, the inspiration will come. An inspiration to do good deeds, an inspiration to do charity. We've all, we've all felt this, an inspiration to pray. That inspiration will come into your heart. There's no good leaving the, the inspiration there. You know, many people, they will say to me, I had an inspiration, I wanted to go to Hajj, I wanted to go to Umrah. But all they did, they left it there. The, the inspiration came and that was it, it was left empty. The first point the Mashaikh have given is that a true sincere person is that they're opportunistic. They seek out opportunities and grab them with both hands. They seek the opportunity and they take it. 
So an opportunity to go to Umrah What is it? Maybe you might have seen a leaflet on the wall Or a Umrah tra group travelling A thousand pound, whatever I've got the money, I want to go But I'm not going to go So then a person opportunistic And they actually make the first step and you hear this in the Quran and you hear this in many, uh, many nasheeds as well and the hadith could see Allah says walk to me uh, uh, walk to me and I will run to you to the nearest meaning this is that part this is the first element of a person being sincere is that they take the first step they take the effort they do what? struggle mujahida they struggle who said it was easy? You know, you're leaving a life of ghafla, you're leaving a life of sin, you're leaving a life of bad company, you're leaving a life of dunya, dunya, dunya. No one said it was just going to be easy, flick of a finger and you leave the world straight away. It's, an, it's a slow working process, but you have to work with it. You have to remain with it. I'll tell you a, a story once, once the Mashaik mentioned, and they said that imagine you go to a diet class, you go to like a, a lecture or an auditorium and uh, you know it's a, a lecture on how to lose weight and they said that person who sits there and just listens to the lecture how to lose weight actually he'll gain more weight and then they further elaborated on this story and they mentioned that once like you know he this one of the people who attended the lecture he thought there's no way I can lose weight I have to be fat forever, I have to be, not that, it's not that it's a bad thing, this is just one example that they've given and they went to, uh, you know, they overweight and they thought there's no way, I've tried going to the gym, I've tried dieting but for some reason I can't lose my belly, I can't lose weight so what happened was he went to the doctor and he said to the doctor, doctor I think uh, this overweightness runs in my family and the doctor said, actually, no one runs in your family. <laughs> That's the actual issue, that no one runs in the family. So he then understood straight away, actually, maybe I need to exercise a little bit more and do a little bit more struggle, then I might lose the weight. Then I might lose this weight, because the struggle it has to be there. You can't just expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fadl to rain down upon you. Tomorrow you wake up, kamil wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This happens to very, very few people and even then it is from the very young age It doesn't happen, you've lived your normal life gone through ghafla, gone through sin How is it you expecting this all of a sudden? It's not going to happen If you're waiting on this then brother, you will be waiting on this till death It's not going to come The second, the second element of sincerity So number one is being opportunistic Number two, and they said, being persistent so now you've 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 been the, you've been granted this opportunity. The second one is so how do they how do they define persistent? They said the fact of continuing. This is actually the Oxford definition. So it's not something I made up. The fact of continuing in an opinion or course of action in spite of difficulty or oppression. I'll simplify a little bit more that you struggle against someone else's opinion or someone else's, or someone else's feelings in the course of success, basically that you know that this is the way to salvation but what is it you do? You persist, you persist, you persist the whole world may go against you, your whole family and everyone but you remain persistent in that effort the third element of, of receiving is being consistent there is no goodness in having an opportunity then fighting off adversary and then there's no consistency there I'll go do this, I'll go do that, I'll pray when I feel like it that's not the benefit, that's not a symbol or a sign of a sincere person that every single time his feelings overcome him he fails that he himself is not in control he himself is not in control, the consistency is not present within him there is no consistency now we've got Alhamdulillah our brother Ijaz here Mashallah recently a couple of years ago they ran a marathon he can tell you that oh, uh, Ijaz you might as well tell us now because I've not really talked to you about this was it something you could do overnight? no 
week after week, training, training, dieting, making effort, making mujahida, and then even then it's a struggle and it's still a pain. It's still not easy, is it? Still he has to remain consistent. This is again another sign, but a worldly example, but even in the spiritual world, even in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there has to be some consistency there. That you have some form of regularity. The fourth element is sun, it's called sunnatu, meaning sunnatu meaning we can define as the practical elements of the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning having priority to the sunnah of the of sunnah mubarak of the Prophet ﷺ. That you choose the practices and you implement them and you act upon them. Uh, brother, can we get this door shut, please? It's a draft coming in. <laughs> Yeah, so again, the aspect of priority. It has to be something that, okay, say for example, it's Fajr. You're not going to delay your Fajr because of something else. Don't delay your Zohar, Asr, Maghrib and Isha. The priority has to be there. Very simple guidelines, I'm telling you. There's nothing that is out of the ordinary. You'll find this in books of many Mashaif. These elements of sincerity. This is why it is very difficult to say, I am sincere. Because we fail on, on being opportunity, we fail in opportunity, we fail in being persistent, we fail in being const, uh, consistent, we fail in its priority. And believe me, this is before even you start being sincere. This is before the beginning, this is even before. This is precondition level. Number five, half habit importance. Having habitual practices that are performed regularly. This might be in the form of amal, awrad, askar, zikr, tazkiyah. It comes in these forms. A habit has to be formed. A solid foundation. This is sort of your element of foundation. That when they go through these stages very quickly, he will, he will notice some, some aspect of himself that he will start to develop certain habits. He will start to develop habits of good speech. He will start to develop habits of beneficial speech. He will start to refrain from lying. He will start to refrain from swearing. He will start to refrain from backbiting. Because a habit has been practiced over the course of 30, 40 days. Practical implementation. Lastly, Actually, I'll just mention an example with regards to importance. Ramadan comes. And he gives value. So the, the month of Ramadan is there. And he knows that to, in order to benefit from the month of Ramadan, I can't just physically fast. I can't just physically refrain from eating and sleep, eating and marital relationships. That is not a fast. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent lana upon them person who just fast with their, you know, fast from uh, eating and fast from marital relationships. That is not a fast. Get this concept out of your head that I can just, in when the month of Ramadan comes, which is only three or four months away, it's not far. That is not a fast. Just to refrain from eating and marital relationships. What about the Salm on Lisan? The fasting of the tongue, the fasting of the eyes, the fasting of the ear. The Prophet ﷺ has once mentioned sawmul qalb, meaning the fasting of the heart. That give your heart, meaning a break, and give it the love, give it the relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it desires. Enable it to be a receptive heart and not a reflective heart, meaning it's something that is, you know, it, it, it's almost. Uh, getting moving away uh, the goodness. The last element is tafadul, preference. Actually, I'll ask a question here. When I said to you preference, tafadul, what does it mean to you? What does preference mean to you? If you all want to go, I'll give you all a go. That's not a problem. If you all want to share your opinion. Brother, I'll ask you, what do, when someone says... Um, what do you want to do, though? 
Okay. Give it, someone give me another one. What does preference mean? Your choice. Choice. Yeah. No. That's, they will say that's freedom of will. But what does when I say preference? So say I'll use I'll say it in a different word. You prefer. Let me let me present it in a different way. One thing over the other. One thing over the other. That's one element. The, you know, you know, preference is such a vast topic. There could be a whole bayan on preference. Let me tell you, tafadul means something you like. Something you like. Something you love. You know, priority, Hassan, what Brother Hassan mentioned here is priority. That's something that you put one thing over the other. I'm talking about tafadul. Tafadul, uh, tafadul, la, tafadul rasul. Tafadul halq, meaning the importance of preference. That's something you like to do. It's something can be very easily overlooked. Like when you say prefer, 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 I can easily sit here, prefer, prefer, prefer. But when I say preference, it means something you love to do, you like to do. I'm presenting it to you simply in another way. Say, now I say to you, Fajr time has come, uh, so Fajr time has arrived. The priority is that you get up and you pray. The preference is that you want to get up and you love to pray. That is the preference. Say the Sunnah of the Prophet I have other clothes, I could wear joggers, I can wear... It's not that I'm just sat here that I'm, I, I, you know, I have to sit in a uniform. I can come and sit in normal clothes too. The, just because what I wear does not necessarily mean that this is the, this is the knowledge. The knowledge does not sit in the Imam and the knowledge does not sit in the Jubba. These are just... It's almost like a practical, physical implementation of what you... So you want to say what you speak, practice what you preach kind of thing. When you prefer, meaning that you get up in the morning and the first thing you put on is your beloved Imama. You put on your Jubba. That is something you love to do. Like even when other clothing is there, you think, I'd rather wear the Jubba, I'd rather wear the Imama. Not that it's a bad thing to do. It's just something that is, it's something to work towards. I don't like it when people say to me, oh, you're, it's almost like you're singling me out. I'm not singling any one single person out. You can wear an ordinary clothes. You can wear whatever you like. This is, this is your choice. But it's something where you say, this is what I love to do. I love that because the Prophet ﷺ loved this. The Prophet ﷺ wore this. When Allah SWT designed and created Rasulullah ﷺ, Allah SWT placed a turban upon their head. Allah SWT placed them with the jubbah. If it's good enough for Allah SWT, it surely is good enough for us. There is no two ways about it. But general ruling, ruling in clothes is not to wear things tight, covering the satr, no religious emblems, etc, etc. And from a fiqh point of view. But in terms of tafaddul, tafaddul rasul, the preference has to be given. So it works like this. So when you prefer, it works in three separate, co three separate components. You prefer, you like, and you love. From this, a person inherits shafaqa al halq the compassion upon creation because he understands the greater the overall the wider picture the wider spectrum he understands and from this you know like it's a big topic or who your loyalty to who is your loyalty with who is your loyalty with this is where you can firmly say or firmly start to feel the loyalty with Allah SWT and the Prophet and inshallah I will uh, end on this note but also open up the, 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 the floor for questions inshallah if anyone does want to ask anything actually how is it that we can become sincere which process can we follow and I can say from, from my point of view is that I don't know if the brother uh, Shahid is any cards available I think there's some up there if you have a look yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just pass me one of them cards, please. <coughs> there is none. No cards? Okay. Yeah, so basically, from, from an overall point of view, a person will ask, how can I become sincere? You know, yes, you may have benefited from some portion of the speech, even whatever little you have. But firstly, I actually pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beseech. Ya Allah, actually allow me to benefit first and foremost and then thereafter everybody else. Because I am also lacking in sincerity and I also think and 
learn? How is it that a person can benefit? Is there a systematic approach that we know? When the brother will come and he will mention there is a way, a systematical approach to Allah's Panta, Allah's closeness, Allah's pleasure. And that is the known way of Tariqatul Muhammadiyya under the guidance of our Mashaikh, Sayyidina Shaykh Ahmad Dabbaq. It is free of charge, no one is asking you to come. You don't have to pay me money for this lesson. Even though there could be other places, they will charge you hundreds of pounds to hear the same thing, but maybe those people give value to that speech. They might charge you 50, 100 pounds how to become a business entrepreneur. You know, you see these courses online, you know, like these, what do you call them? These life coaches, you'll see them here and there. Uh, you know, learn to become the next business entrep- entrepreneur, learn to become a millionaire. Apu, he's not even a millionaire, he's probably in overdraft sometimes in most cases. This is where you realize these are like the fornicators, is that they're offering you a service themselves don't even benefit from. So this is where under the teachings of our Mashaikh Sayyidina Shaykh Ahmad the you know, this is not something that is new. It has come from the teachings of Sayyidina Abdul, Abdul Aziz the Baag, Rahimahullah, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani. And this is taught step by step from right from the tongue sheet, the prayer sheet, the sincerity sheet, how one can become a true Kamil Abid and worshipper and friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these means. And if it doesn't work, then a person is entitled to go and search and seek from whatever they want to go and look for. But there is a known way how your person can benefit from really the whole of Nelson can benefit from, even just the tongue sheet, even these little things like this. Because we'll be lacking, we'll be swearing, lying, backbiting, and this is, this is part of the problem. If a person protected their tongue, you protect society. You protect your family, you protect your home. How many, is it, how many, instances, how many instances is it that in your life, you can refer to in your own life, that if I, because I, I misuse my tongue in that one element, you know, I lost friendships, I lost family ties. You know, I lost love of people. Why? Is because these simple things that you were unable to guard, protect yourself from. So, inshallah, if we, we don't have anything now, but you can still, anyone is welcome to come and sit with me, inshallah, and I can give you some PDF or something to read from, uh, sent over the phone. So, inshallah, we will, uh, we will end there. Jazakallah khair. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Wa nastaghfiru wa atubu ilaik.